Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. And uh, we're going to finish looking at Daniel 11, verse 44 and 45. But before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful that we can come here this morning to open your word and to examine um, our lives in the light of your word. And we pray that your spirit can speak to our hearts and our, our minds and that we can have a clear understanding of truth for this time. We pray for those who watch these videos. We know that, that there are many people that you have throughout this world that are searching for truth. And we just pray, Lord, that um, you can lead them into all truth. Be with us now through thy spirit. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again. So I've spent a bit of time looking at quite a lot of, of numbers. <laughs> uh, we're probably going to get to Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. But right now we're, we're trying to finish off verse 44 and 45. So just a quick review. Um, obviously, what we've been doing for anybody watching is that we look at the historical application of Daniel chapter 11. And then we look at a present truth application, which we put in red in the text there. And this is going to be a paper. It'll probably be delivered um, as presentations in a more condensed form uh, at the end of August uh, when we have our camp meeting in Oregon. But for now, we're working through very meticulously the scriptures. This is study number 194. And um, the majority of that has been spent on Daniel chapter 11 itself, though we did spend a lot of time on pre-study, studying other uh, related chapters in Daniel and in Revelation and uh, other places that um, would give us light in coming to the study of Daniel chapter 10, 11, and 12, which is Daniel's last vision. So somebody, you know, commented on a video a couple couple of videos back and you know so what is this all about you know who's this jeff guy all these different things and i don't know what their background is whether they're seventh day adventist or not so i gave a comment just a brief comment on the video trying to answer some of those questions but somebody just coming to these videos for the first time would have a hard time understanding what we're doing though i know that god is leading all kinds of people all over the world to study in ways that we are studying. And it doesn't mean because we're studying that we got everything all right. I mean, we know that there's lots that we we don't fully understand and even things that we probably understand incorrectly because we constantly keep getting corrected. So it must mean that, you know, we're going to continue to be corrected. Uh, but it's the method of study that we're using that I think is important. That is we follow Miller's rules. We use line upon line. We compare scripture with scripture. And then um, other symbols, even symbols like dates or Strong's numbers, uh, are not our primary way of interpreting a text. But when it comes to the present truth application, we have an idea already of how these things relate to our history, to a repeat of history. And so uh, the numbers are a confirmation. And they, they draw our attention to things that we might not notice. So we're not doing numerology, we're not like the magical use of numbers in any way like that. So when we mention like people's birthdays or anything, it doesn't make anybody any special. It, all it is is that uh, these are spans of time with, which relate to messages given uh, at this time, um, in what we call the time of the end uh, from November 9th, 1989 to the Sunday law. And so that is a repeat of Millerite history from basically 1798 to 1844. So we're repeating that history in this movement. And that history itself, the repeat of it, is already built into Daniel chapter 11, as we've shown. Okay, so when we look at the present truth, we're just going to quickly review these verses. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. So the power that's being troubled historically is the papacy. Now, this is something that's still future, right? So this is uh, addressing the Sunday law that's coming. And 
we look at these tidings out of the east and out of the north as messages, uh, specifically the message out of the east is, if we look at it, um, it's, it's a repeat of that history, the loud cry, behold, the bridegroom cometh. And out of the north, Babylon has fallen, has fallen. So those two messages in Millerite history are repeated in our history. And the symbols that we have for these is uh, we know that the east represents Islam as a symbol and the north represents Babylon as a symbol. And those two messages then can be tied in our time, not specifically with that we're saying, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye to meet him and behold, Babylon has fallen, has fallen even though we, we are saying those, but they're embodied or encapsulated in the repeat of history within this movement with the message of the 26th day of the fourth month in 2020, based on July Josiah Lich's prophecy that gave us July 18, 2020, and then the symbol for the destruction of Jerusalem, the 10th day of the fifth month from Ezekiel's prophecy, based on the prophecy of Josiah, that, that helps pinpoint that. And that 10th day of the fifth month then symbolizes uh, the message Babylon has fallen, has fallen. And we see that this is a message within this movement that has been testing us. And it's our human nature that's troubled. Right. So so we can see here that, uh, you know, troubling him, obviously, this is papal Rome. But when we're applying it to this movement, it becomes a more personal message. And then we can see that that in this movement that we're going to have these false messages countering uh, the everlasting gospel. And, and this is going to represent uh, the rejection of July 18th and the prohibition to listen to the message of July 18, 2020 that has occurred within this movement. So that's verse 44. So we have the present truth application, and, and, and that's a parallel to the historical application, which is still future, right? <clears throat> Any comments on verse 44? You know, we still have some of the numbers are symbols that we could look at, uh, but there isn't a lot in verse 44 that we applied as symbols. So that is the Strong's numbers. We didn't we didn't take many from that verse and make them spans of time. The only one that we have that two seven six three, which we can say that the square of uh, one hundred and forty four thousand is two is it two seven six three? What is the square? It's an iteration of those numbers. Yeah, two zero seven three six is what it is. Now in verse forty five, then we know that this issue historically when he plants that is the papacy plants uh, the tabernacle of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain that this is this Sunday law test it says the universal Sunday law Sunday law and then it says yet he shall come to his end so it, it encompasses the universal Sunday law but also the stuff that follows after even after the close of probation, because when none shall help him, right, that's going to uh, be ultimately the, the destroying of the, the papacy and the man of sin after the second, at, at the time of the second coming of Christ. Okay. Um, so that just has a point about Miller's rules. We follow Miller's rules as given by God in Isaiah 28 instead of only William Miller's rules. Some people are prejudiced against the Millerites at SDA ism. I've been having to explain why I don't accept the once saved, always saved, evangelicals, etc. Yeah, so obviously Miller was using Isaiah 28, and and we are as well. But we have some insight into it. That is, we draw things on a line in a way that Miller never did. Uh, Jeff, you have a comment? Just your mic is on. Oh no, uh, I was just. Kind of mumbling under my tongue. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Just turn off your mic there. And then when we look at verse 45 and we try to, to look at some of the symbols, um, in this verse. So one is we have 168, 
Now we, we know that that's the number of hours in a week. Uh, tabernacles, it can be counted as tent. And so, so we've noted that. And then, uh, he shall plant. And that word plant has all the digits of 391.5 in it. So we, we just noted that. Whether that's actually significant, whether that matters in this case or not, I don't think it affects any. Um, so it's 395.1 in reverse, right? 5193. So it's just something we notice. And, and so these are symbols that, that we already have. And then we have, uh, between the seas. So we're saying that this is that he's going to secure a global union of church and state among the nations of the world to force worldwide compliance with Sunday legislation. That's what we have there. So this is this worldwide or international Sunday law. And the glorious holy mountain, we've done studies on this extensively. Uh, we know that this has been a part of our message for a long time. And so this is a reference in this case so the glorious land we have is the United States. The glorious holy mountain is not the same as the glorious land. Right? This has to do with God's people at the end of the world, the 144,000. So this is a reference to that. And then we have, um, if he shall come, so 935. And we know that word, it's, it's a very common word, and it's five times 187, uh, to his end. And that word end, uh, um, Kate's, it, it shows up lots of other places in this sense of time of the end, uh, but here's just to it. It's his, his extremity and none shall help him. So we, we haven't looked at those numbers in particular to see if they're spans of time or if they relate. Now, if we are going to apply this in a present truth sense, what would we do with this? So we know that this is talking about the Sunday law. Does it relate to anything to our time? Like, can we, like, we, we've taken the verse 44 and we applied it to our time. Is there any way in which they planted the tabernacles of the palace between uh, the seas? And we'd have to understand what the seas is. Do they represent uh, this movement, the people in the movement? And does the glorious holy mountain represent a message, you know, coming from a part of this movement? What the seas How, represent? What the seas represent? Uh, the uh, worldwide. Uh, yeah, in, 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 the, in the, the, the of this message. Yeah, so in the historical application, which is still future, we, we would recognize that has to do with the world, the people of the world, right? So the people of the world are kept away from the message because the papacy is going to plant the tabernacles of his palace between the people. And the 144,000. So, but if we're applying it to, to our movement, it's not necessarily worldwide. I mean, seas just maybe represent people. Maybe between, uh, between different groups. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm kind of. Okay. So if we were going to apply the tabernacles of his palace in the present truth application, because we're, we're sort of seeing that that this power then would be FFA in some way. FFA was worldwide. <laughs> yeah, it, it but, is yeah worldwide. but it's not so much that it's worldwide. That's not really the point, though, of this. It's just that we're, we're not dealing with the whole world in the sense of all the people of the world, right? Just no. But within the movement, right? Yeah, within the movement. But our message, our message is scattered all over the world. When Jeff made that statement um, regarding, you know, not listening to people in the movement or, or people in the movement not to listen to people like us, people who don't agree with what Jeff is teaching. And that was, I believe, uh, the date of that was March. We mentioned it yesterday. What was the date? March, March 30th or was it the 23rd? 16th. So March 16th. 16th. Yeah. So March 16th, Jeff's going to make that, that comment, basically. Just nobody listen to the people who aren't agreeing with his message. And, and we would have to mark that that is significant 
event, right? Whether the date March 16th has any connection in any way, I don't know. Yeah, it's um, definitely significant. Mm-hmm. So, um, and that was going to be, yeah, the 316 in these lines we have is the day of infamy. So what, is, can you explain that, Angela? Well, just as Pearl, Pearl Harbor was, that's what I'm comparing it to. But I know we have a 316. I'm just trying to figure out now what was that in relation to. But we have a 316 yeah. in, in the ancient past too, do we not? I think it was to, to do with one of the kings. Am I wrong? Oh, or the temple? Jehoiachin yeah, Jehoiachin's taken cap and captive on March 16th, 597. Okay, BC. there we have it. Interesting. Yeah. But I, I don't, I didn't think we had a May 16th date in our March, history. March I mean, 16th. March 16th. Now we do. Well, now we do, I guess, yeah. But I was just thinking any other one. Okay. So we have this March 16th. And so I don't, if there's some way that we can tie this numerically. Was it August 29th that, uh, how minor and Tess separated? Is that August 29th? Yeah. Separated, uh, it was nine, uh, 2019. Sorry about the dates between those two. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have this, have this event, right? So that's going to be March 16th. But I don't know if we can have, like, um, if we have some, something that connects us to that other than we just March 16th FF 8, 2024 FFA placed I could put as a sentence yeah, put that. so the glorious holy mountain in this case is a message that's the position I'm at least taking for now whether we refine that in some other way so we know of course he shall come to his end. We, we looked at this in other places. Obviously, 935 is five times 187. And 90 or 7093 we've looked at before uh, in lots of places. <clears throat> it was the number of days from 911 uh, to February 11th, 2021, uh, to which is... Stephen's birthday in 2021, and we had other iterations of those numbers. Now, when when we look at this paper and what we've done, so um, we know that this paper we took we took this from uh, Swearingen, and then we modified it. One is we got added a present truth application, uh, but it's sort of his way of of putting the the, the historical application within the text. Now, Ellen White had actually said um, that the books of Daniel and Revelation should be published from the Bible with a few footnotes here and there for people to study, and that those should be sold. Both Uriah Smith and um, Haskell wrote, uh, in a sense, trying to fulfill that need. I know at least Haskell's was uh, his book on Daniel the prophet and... Um, uh, what's the one on the Seer of Patmos, those two books? I think people should be familiar with those. You should have read them. So Haskell's two books that deal with Daniel and Revelation were an attempt to do that, though, uh, and I definitely think Haskell's were better than Uriah Smith's, personally, as far as trying to fulfill that uh, request of Sister White's. But I would think that, uh, you know, it, it should have even been more simple than that. And, and so I, I think in some ways this the purpose of this is to, to make this simple the historical application. So when I, when I put out the paper, I'm going to actually have a paper with just the historical application in it. And, um, and then I'm going to have another paper that has both the historical and the present truth application. So my, my plans for, for this of, of Daniel chapter 11, at least, is going to fulfill what Ellen White sort of said uh, for the book of Daniel. I don't think I'm going to put out the whole book of Daniel in this way. Now, what we don't have is we don't have the remaining ch- chapters, like chapter 12, the remaining chapter, chapter 12. We don't have that. But I do want to look at chapter 12, right? So we're going to look at chapter 12. 
So chapter 12 was never on this paper? Yeah, it was never on this paper. But I'm, I'm going to put it on this paper. I'm going to add it is what I'm saying. Oh, oh that's good, yeah. It's part because of I want to do the same thing that we did with chapter 12, at least to the end of this vision. Because, you know, how should I do this? I guess that's good enough. I'm going to have to edit this a little bit. Um, the fonts that I have here, that's Indian Pogo. Oh, that's a weird font. Okay. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's, I don't have these square brackets around these Hebrew numbers. That's why it looks different. Okay. So I want to look at, uh, first, and this might take us a little bit of time. So, you know, we've, Reviewed verse 45, and we, we'll come back to these things. We're going to put these things on a line in more detail as we go through them. Uh, but I was looking at this this morning because I got up at 2 o'clock. So I spent a lot of time looking at this. And one of the things that caught my attention was this at that time. So you'll see in this, and you, you, you see it a little bit easier if I make all these bold supposed to be bold just so this phrase and at that time which is 1931 h 1931 and h6256 so obviously we've looked at the word time as a symbol of time uh, we've also in other places have added it like time of the end uh, etc but this one occurs three times here and I, and I think that's important and I'm also think that the King James should have been translated differently. You'll see what I mean. Okay, so there is the three places. You can see at that time, shall Michael stand up, the great prince which, which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book okay All right so that's going to be uh daniel 12 verse 1 it's a, it's a fairly long verse so first i want to look at, at how we would translate this now when it has here such as never was since there was a nation even to that time and that at that time i don't think i would have broken up the sentence in the way that they did that is I don't think that it's, it's saying even to that time and there they got a colon and then at that time as if it's like another phrase. Because what do they normally do when they double words in Hebrew or phrases? What do they normally do? So there's, there's a few different ways we could interpret this. So what do they normally do when they double something in Hebrew? What, what does it mean in Hebrew? Well, they do it to stress a certain point. Yeah, so it's it's just an emphasis, right? Um, they can use it as a superlative or just to emphasize something. Uh, I mean, we also understand it as to be a a symbol of the midnight cry or midnight, right? So it's it's a doubling. You know, Babylon has fallen, has fallen. You know, for instance. So that's where we get that from. But we, we can't just take every time that we see a word double, it, it means midnight. Now, in this case, we have actually uh, three times that it occurs. It occurs at the beginning of the verse and then in the middle of the verse twice. Now, uh, why? I mean, I guess, you know, it's it's common for them to repeat themselves in, in Hebrew. But as a symbol... What would that, what could it mean? That's something that the phrase there in that verse is, occurs three times. Three angels' messages, three okay, so, messages. So, yeah, so it could refer to the three angels' messages and, and as a symbol, right? And, and so we should be able to see that that's, that's definitely fits in with what we understand about this verse and, and how we're looking at Daniel chapter 11 to begin with. So, so we could say it has to do with the three angels' messages. And, and we could also argue that, you know, the doubling of it right, you know, one after the other is uh, a symbol of the second angel's message. So that, that still fits in with what we're saying. Now, we've also taken these as a span of time. 
And, and, and that's where it gets a little bit interesting. So I'm trying to get this done and talking at the same time, which isn't a good plan, but I want to get this set up properly just so we can see these, these numbers more clearly. So they don't look blurred into the text itself. Okay. Now, if we add 1931 and 6256 together, um, we get a period of time. So I'm going to show you here what I did this morning, which I thought was really interesting. Now, we have dealt with, you know, people's birthdays. And, and in this case, it's going to be Stephen's birthday again, and just some things we've already noted about uh, the coincidence of his birthday. So we know he's born February 11th, 1969, and that's 11,900 days and 1,190 minutes would actually bring us to uh, 9-11, right? And we don't really need the 1,190 minutes. That actually brings us to later in the day in 9-11. Um, if we're starting at the beginning of February 11th, 1969, you count 11,900 days, it brings you to the beginning of September 11th, right? But even if you had the 1190 minutes, you're still going to be in, in that date, September 11th, 2001. Now, we also had noted that if you count from 1989, November 9th, uh, that it will come to February 11th, three and a half years later or whatever. So you can see that I put that in two different places here on this chart, uh, from 1989 to February 11th, 1993. And in 1993, uh, Stephen would then be, uh, what, 24 years old? Is that right? Yeah, so 24 years old. And then uh, you see there's 3,134 days. And then that would bring you to 9-11. And then there's 6,633 days. That brings you to November 9th, 2019. And then you count 1,190 days again. And it'll bring you to... Uh, Stephen's uh, birthday 30 years later, so when he turned 54, which was last February, last year in February. So now he's he, he's going to be 50, he was 55 on February 11th, 2024. So you can see the 365 days there between those two dates. So we just have basically that that is a a structure that we had up to February 11th, 2023. Now. You're going to see that I've put some other numbers in there, and we're going to see how they relate. Now, the first one is uh, all I did is I added 1931 and uh, 6256 together. So you can see that up here, and that equals 80, 8,187, so 8,187. And... And that's going to bring you from the end of 9-11. So if you go from the end of September 11th, 2001, it'll bring you to the beginning of February 11th, 2024. So that's going to be one year after 1190 days from uh, November 9th, 2019. Okay. That make, that makes sense to people. Uh, it's a period of 1555 days. I'm going to just copy this here. Just make a note. The, the number 1555, if you add all of the divisors, uh, it's called the sum of the divisors, is, is 1872. So that's just a note there. So that number that we have, the number of days, and, and, and obviously 1872 is important and that's that's simply uh the way that i got that is that uh, it's five times 311 is 1555 and if you add one plus five plus 311 plus 1555 you get 1872 does that make sense so that's just the numbers that you can divide and you add them together and you get the, all those digits uh of the 18th of July, 2020. Now, the interesting part, when we take this uh, span of time from November 9th, 1989, 
to February 11th, 2024. It's a period of uh, 12, 12,502 days. And what do you see interesting there on the chart about that period of time? So if we go from November 9th, which if we go from November 9th, you can count 1,190 days to Stephen's birthday, you know, three and a half years later. But we're counting from November 9th, 1989 to his birthday this year that has passed. And it's 12,512 days. And what do we notice about that span of time? Well, you have it right there, two times 65, six, so two times time. Yeah, right. So <laughs> two times time, times times two. <laughs> you want to put it that way. Okay. So, so I thought that was really interesting. It, 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 so it confirms to me the, the significance of this line. Now, there are some other things about this verse. Now, this verse has a lexical sum of, uh, if I can remember, so I'll show you here. I know when I, when I draw these charts out ahead of time, it's nice, but it doesn't really help you see the process as much. But anyway, we're going to go to Daniel 12. That's what I want. And, and the lexical sum is 126,905. Right. So I'm just going to. Copy this here and share my calculator. So, so I looked at this number and, you know, I said, well, what would I do with this number? It's a pretty big number. If, if we put it as years, it's like, I can't remember what it was, three, 300 and something maybe. I can't remember. I guess I could just, if I divided it, well, I'll do it this way. I'll divide it by uh, 360. So if I did it by prophetic period, you're going to see it's 352. Yeah. So I think it was like 348 or something like that when I did it by 365 and a quarter. And, and I don't know where I would put that, right? So 352 years, does that fit in some place? I mean, if you took away 391, you know, you'd have like 38 years. So I don't know. Anyway. So, so this number anyway, what I decided to do was see how many minutes it is, right? So we know that we could divide it by 1,440, and that would give us a number of days. And the number of days is 88 with, with the de decimal. Now, is 88 days significant? Have we used this in our lines? I think I vaguely remember something. Okay. Or something yeah, like so, so one is it's... Eight days and eight days, which is the second Passover, right? Yeah, that's uh, what it was. Yeah. So we, we have it for that. And, uh, you know, it's uh, also 88 days is from when you have the first day of the 10th month to the first day of the first month. That's the cardinal count. Historically, in a 457 BC, it's actually technically going into 456 BC. Right. So when they have that divorcement, right, they start on the first day of the 10th month and they finish on the first day of the first month, that would be 88 days. And so we applied 88 days to 88 months. 88 months is 2,640 days. And we counted that from the end of Collins Trump uh, prophetic mirror uh, to April 5th, 2030. Right. So, so we fit it into April 5th, 2030. And uh, so we have 88. Now, the remainder of time that since this is is 88 days, that could be uh, seen as uh, minutes. Right. So I, I could just simply subtract 88 days and see how many minutes were left over. And so I would just multiply this by one, one four, four, zero. And I would see that it's whoops. I did that math wrong. I didn't hit the four twice. Uh, so I'd have to go to five. Let's do this again. Times one, four, four, zero. And it's 185 minutes. So that's three hours and five minutes. That's So it's 88 days, three hours and five minutes, or 88 days, 185 minutes. Okay? Does that make sense? So it's, it's more than 88 days. Uh, but not much more. 
three hours and five minutes more. Now, would there be any significance in that? Like, it'd be nice if it was 187 minutes, right? But it's not. It's 185. Okay. No thoughts about that. Now, um, we have here in this diagram, we'll go back to this diagram. Now, what I notice about this diagram is we have um, this long period of time that is from when Stephen is born to February 11th, 2024. And we have 20,088 days. So we have 88 days there. So what could we do with that? What, what, what did that suggest that we could do? Because we have this symbol from the verse of 88 days and we see 20,088 days. Any ideas? Okay. So what if we just said, well, take the 88 days off the 20,088 days? Now that would bring us to November 15th, 2023, right? It's about three months, right? But actually be because we got some long months in there. December has 20, 31 days and January has 31 days. Um, so, so when you take that into account, you go from November 15th, 2023 to February 11th, 2024. Now, is there anything significant about November 15th, 2023 that we know of offhand? Because it could just be a coincidence that this has 88 days there. And, and we just found that that verse gives us that symbol of 88 days. Or we could just say those symbols are related. You know, those just 88 has showed up twice. No thoughts on this? Well, you said November 15th of 2023. Yeah. So biblically, we're talking about the first day of the ninth month. Mm-hmm. Right. What import do we have on either the numbers 19 or 91? Well, we have both 19 and 91 as symbols, but uh, maybe the the better question is what about the first day of the ninth month? Have we ever marked that before? I mean, we've had the ninth month, the 20th day, day of the ninth month, seeing if there's any first day yet. I know Haggai has the 20th day, the 4 and 20th day of the ninth month. And the 20th day, the 4th and 20th day of the ninth month. Um, well, Zechariah is the fourth day of the ninth month. So we, so we don't have anything for the month, which is Kislev, on the first day of the ninth month. But we do have 19 and 91 as a symbol, right? So 19 years, and then 91 is 13 times 7. And there's some other symbols with that. But nothing that I would see is really significant here. Cause I, cause I looked at that beforehand. I looked at, you know, it's the first day of the ninth month, thought about it a little bit. Now, November 15th does show up occasionally in our lines in relation to, um, November 9th, 2019. It's going to be sort of related to this period of time that Jeff says that there would be like seven days for a period of probation. So he's going to count the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. That he said back on November 9th, that, or maybe it was November 10th, he said that, I think. The people have this opportunity to, to turn again and repent. So it's, it's relating to a close of probation. That, that's the idea there. Now, when we look at Daniel 12 verse 1, because that's the verse we're addressing, it relates to a close of probation. That's what Daniel 12, verse 1, and Michael standing up. Okay. And so what, what I'm saying is that, that, that in some way, uh, this could relate to a close of probation for this movement, which we've already talked about. That is a separation that has occurred within this movement. And, and that hasn't been initiated by us. Like we haven't shut anybody out, but it has occurred in connection with uh, people in this movement. Now, um, you know, Jeff has, has said things that uh, could relate to that. You know, we got that block there. Just uh, seeing what that does. Okay. <clears throat> now, so some other thoughts, just going back to the verse itself. So we'll come back to this diagram. Just 
So at that time, Shawn Michaels stand up. So we we understand that this is a close of probation, and it's at that time, right? So this is that that eight one eight seven. If we add them together, uh, that we get as a symbol that period of time that's going to bring us to uh, February eleventh, twenty twenty four, and then it says the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Prince there is going to be Sar. As you see, great, just Gadal. Um, standeth is that common word we run into, Ahmad. Uh, children, that same one, Ben. Uh, people, um, you guys hopefully are learning your Hebrew. And and there shall be a time of trouble. So we got time of trouble as well. And we haven't looked at that, adding that together to see what span of time we get. Um, but you're going to get uh, uh, 13,000 and something, 13, maybe 14,000, or 1,400, I mean, 1,400, 1,400. Well, let me see. I'm just going to add them together quickly here. <laughs> 6256 plus 6869. Yeah, I don't know why I said 13. Uh, let me see, 6256 plus... Yeah, 13,125, which as a period of time, we've looked at other periods of time dealing with that. It's going to be almost 36 years. It's going to be short. It's going to be about uh, 14 days, two weeks short of 36 years. What's 36 years? Here we go. Six. Yeah, six times six is 36, right? So it has to do with... Uh, the Babylonian magic square. Now it's it's going to be two weeks short of 36 years, and not sure if I put it into biblical years if I what it would do. But uh, like if we if it's actually 36 biblical years, probably not. It'd be probably short by four or five days, but um, maybe three days short. Anyway, we got that time of trouble. So we got the word time there, uh, such as never was since there was a nation even to the same time and at that time. So you can see that what's translated is the same time and at that time is the same the same Hebrew phrase. And actually the word that's translated as time uh, comes first. So time the same, time the same. So I, I don't think the sentence makes sense to translate it the way they translated it. But they're trying to make sense of this double. Now, with, and you're going to see Young's is going to do basically the same thing, such as have not been since there hath been a nation till that time. And at that time, do thy, do thy people escape, right? Oops. If I go here just to see how other old translations translate it. And one of the contemporary English versions says there will come a time of terrible suffering, right? And so they're using that. The repeating of that time as an emphasis, that's why we put terrible suffering. So lots follow the example of the King James, but, but I don't, I don't think that that's the best way to translate it, but that's how most people are going to translate it. So, you know, I'm like, obviously I'm not the ultimate authority on these things, but I just think that it's more about an emphasis rather than just two different phrases. Since there was a nation to that same time and at that time, right? That's how they're choosing to sort of split it up. But I think they go together. And, and in the Hebrew, there's no, uh, there's nothing that would indicate the way that they're translating it. So you're going to see, and there, there's some other interesting things here. Like you're going to see this, this word here, Hayah, 1961, doubled. And then you're going to have 1471, the, the nation, Goy, uh, 5704, five, which is just a, um, used as a preposition. And then you have time, the same time. And, and they're going to have here uh, the Vav. So they're going to have a Vav. So you're going to see time, et, who, and then they're going to have Vahet. Right, so they're going to have a vav at the beginning, which means and. So they're going to have 
and, and that could be why some people choose to start a new sentence here, right? So the Vav could mean that. But I would take that, that this is emphasizing this. They shall be slippery, right? That's the, they shall escape. Those that are written in the book. So they have delivered, but that, that word means escaped. They shall slip. At that time, my people shall be slippery. Everyone that is found written in the book. Right? So written, you're going to have uh, Kitab and book Sefer. Right? So common words for writing and book. So we have at that time, we have the time of trouble. We have the same time. And we have at that time again. So this and is there in the Hebrew, right? So it can mean and. It's a vav, right? So, so this is a possible translation, but I think the emphasis is on this time. However you want to look at it, it's, it's a repeat. So maybe what they could have translated it as since there was a nation to that time and that same time, thy people shall be delivered, right? They could have put the same there and at the same time or that same time. They could have put same in there is in the different, in the second one rather than the first one. Because what's being emphasized here is the close of probation is all I'm trying to get to. And that it's going to be emphasized with the phrase that time three times. Does that make sense to people? Yeah, it's a sense of importance. Mentioning it that many times. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it, it emphasizes its importance. Okay. So just some other things I wanted to note here. Okay. So we got this, this period of 12,512 days. So let's just go back to this diagram. I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but I want to emphasize this. Okay. So we have this November 9th, 1989 that we can connect to Stephen's 24th and 55th birthdays. So this is a period, right, from 93 to 24. Am I doing that right? Yeah. Okay. Because that's going to be 31 years. And I was figuring this out before, and I can't remember what I did. There was some relationship. Could it have something to do with What's that? Sorry, could it have something to do with the week of Christ? I mean, you have have a have a thirty one there. But what I'm seeing is that Stephen could be taking more of a role in in the present truth movement. I mean, he he's so 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 prominent on these lines. So Stephen, we should be hearing from you more if you're online. Yeah, well, I I think he's very important because without him, there's a lot of things that I wouldn't have figured out. Amen. Oh, right. So. Uh, and, and that's one thing about, about this message, right? This isn't about like some person that God chose to be the leader and everybody follows him. Um, obviously I'm a teacher, right? Cause that's what I've always done, um, taught things, uh, whatever it is. But this message comes from God. It doesn't come from the mind of man. And. You know, Stephen has a big role, and Ryan has a big role, Dwight, but lots of other people as well, Adilio, and and, uh, and basically anybody who's studying this message has has an important role. Now, obviously, some people have found more things than others when it comes to numbers, because some of us have, you know, a natural facility for numbers. So for me, obviously, I, I remember numbers really easily, so I can recognize them. Ryan has the same same skill and so does Stephen. But the message comes from God. It doesn't come from man. So it's not so much about that this person is important because they're in their lives. Um, in, in that sense that, you know, we have to listen to them. Uh, but they're part of the lives, which all of us should be. So Stephen's birthday is, is very significant as, as a symbol, as, as is mine and, and others. But they're not, uh, and, and we're not building anything from them, right? So we, we haven't said because, you know, this person has this birthday, it's now, uh, you know, we're predicting anything from it or whatever, or it's some important waymark. It's just a symbol that ties waymarks together when we have found light on, on certain things. 
right? So it helps sort of, it helps with the structure to see things there. Now, when we've done this here, this line is not line upon line in the sense that we don't have a time at the end and so forth, right? So these are, are, are different than our other lines where we put, you know, here's the time at the end, here's the period of darkness, here's the message. And, and we have to do that with these, right? So we are going to do that and, and put Daniel 11 all together, what it means in the present truth application. But for now, we're just looking at, at these, these numbers that witness to what we've already seen about the verse in its present truth application. Uh, hopefully that helps clarify it a little bit. But, but the very fact that this, this word time, 6256, gives us this a doubling as the span of time is, is not, not very likely to have occurred by chance. Now, people could say, well, we got lots of numbers and we have lots of lines and you're going to find these coincidences every once in a while. But they're actually part of a structure, right? So we have 9-11 to February 11th, 2024, and November 9th, 1989 to February 11th, 2024. So that means the difference between these numbers is happens to be the span of time between November 9th and 9-11. Plus, Stephen already has these connections to November 9th and 9-11 with his birthday, right? So two different ways, the 11,900, and 1,190 minutes, and then 1,190 days. So that just seems to me too much of a coincidence to say that it's not meaningful, right? So I would say it's meaningful. But this verse itself... And, and we're looking at the one... Two, sorry, Theodore, I keep interrupting. My, the one, two, five... Uh, 12512, one, I'm seeing 1225, I'm seeing 252, I'm seeing 215, and we'll probably find more. Yeah, so, so what you're seeing there are symbols of, uh, December 25th, right? Things like that. Is that what you're trying to say? And, and 512 itself? Well, I'm saying of, of, uh, 215, you know, the papal thing and so on. February 15th, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and we have lots of numbers. So, I mean, you're going to see things sometimes that just happen to be coincidences. That, But to me, the fact that you can double the word time and it gives you that span of time that we'd already had without it, right? So first I I just did the 6256 plus 1931. And that's going to count from the end of 9-11 to the beginning of February 11th, 2024. So. Now I was I was trying to work this out a little bit uh too uh because I said well we have 6256 times 2 and then if I have 1931 times 2 that's going to give me 3862 and then I say well 3862 is going to be like 10 and a half years and did that go anywhere so it's technically 10 and a half years in 209 days. I was just trying to, to figure out what I could do with that. And, and 1931 itself as a number you know, is obviously five and a quarter years. It's really five years and a hundred and a couple of days. Right, so just by itself, yeah, five years and 105 days, let's say. So I was trying to figure out you know, what I could do with that. Now we do we do have some other numbers in here that we could look at as well, and and here right now we're just analyzing the numbers. We haven't really said much about how we, we would apply this, but I would think that what we would we do is that we have talked before about closes of probation. Of course, we can't predict the time of the close of probation, but we've had in our lines different periods of time that we mark as close of probations. So that is, um, you know, November 9th. 2019 is a close of probation. Even 9-11 is a close of probation for the, for the Seventh-day Adventist Church as an organization. And, and it doesn't say anything about an individual, right? It doesn't mean that everybody who's a Seventh-day Adventist or everybody who's a Seventh-day Adventist administrator closed their probation. These are just symbols of, okay, yeah, I just got a calculation in there. These are just symbols showing that there, there does come a time in which when we reject light, we close probation upon ourselves. 
And and there is also periods of time in which a message that has been rejected uh, closes that probation on that message. That means that message has done its work, right? That's what it means. It doesn't say anything about the individuals in that case, right? It's just the message itself. And we have had pointed to our time the first day of the first month and um, January 1st and also April 10th, which is the first day of the first month on the biblical calendar, as pointing that there is this change in this movement that has that it marks the end of the divorcement. And, you know, I don't know what February 11th, other than it's, it's two and two, right? It symbolizes that. So, so I'll show you what I mean here. So when I, when I went to Stephen's birthday, I, I counted 1931 days after his birthday. And, uh, so I did this here. So, so that's 1931 days after his birthday and it's May 26, 2029. So after his birthday of uh, this year. Now, notice the biblical date is the 11th day of the second month. So I thought that was interesting. Okay, so these were different things that I I looked at. And then uh, I also had counted uh, before 1989, or before 9-11, actually, and I counted uh, 1,931 days. And this one, if I did an inclusive count, it would bring me to the 11th month or 11th day of the second month as well. That would be an inclusive count. Okay, so counting from, that would count from uh, the beginning of May 30th to the end of uh, September 11th, right? So so we get that 211 again, symbol of February 11th. Whether that was significant or not, I don't know. And... So I still think there's more that we would need to recognize here, just as these numbers, as these symbols of these numbers. And then if we look at these words in, in, in kind of a, so that's not what I wanted, is it? Yeah, I'm going to go here instead. Go there. So, so we have a close of probation being described and, and a time of trouble. So, I mean, obviously, historically, this will be the time of Jacob's trouble that that is going to really point to. So this is the close of probation, right? And, and after the close of probation is the time of Jacob's trouble. Now, are we in are in this movement? Are we in a time of trouble in that sense? Typically, I think we are. Yeah. You know, and, and somebody asked me about um, when we look at Millerite history and because um, they were asking about, you know, the tearing time when we we're looking at in early writings, page 74 and the gathering time. You know, they're asking about well, when when was the tearing time? When was the gathering time? Uh, what is she referring to? And of course, Ellen White is referring to the, the scattering time, I guess, not the tearing time, but the scattering time when God's people were scattered is after October 22nd, 1844. So she's just making an application of what happened historically with the scattering of God's people and their gathering the second time, which was Babylon, Babylonian captivity. She's, she's comparing those two. Now we are comparing our time with 1850. It is, uh, what they're going to do in that history is they're going to study the Bible and they're going to produce the 1850 chart. And that's what we believed we had to do after our disappointment of July 18, 2020. And that's not what was done within the movement, right, generally. And that to me is the strongest evidence that what they had done was not correct because were they interested, was the Canadian American groups really interested in understanding the disappointment in their studies based on what they presented, the topics that they presented and how they looked at, uh, you know, the different things they looked at? Were they demonstrating that they were trying to understand the disappointment? Uh, generally speaking, no. 
No. Right. So mostly there was an avoidance of it, a, a lack of interest in it. And so, you know, this to me was, you know, not good, but I wasn't going to, you know, just like condemn people or anything like that. We, you know, we're, we're all brethren and, you know, none of us have the authority to do that. But I tried to encourage people to study. So I did everything I could personally, and I, I know many of you did, to try to minister to those in the movement uh, by studying, right? inviting them to studies, going to the studies, sharing things at the studies. But there wasn't an interest in it. right? There just wasn't. And so I don't know how we could be talking about like how Jeff is sort of looking at it. You know, that he's trying to apply that gathering time now, from what I understand, to what he's doing. But there is no parallel in Millerite history with what he's doing that would compare with early writing 74. Right. That would compare with what we have been doing. His what he's doing would more compare with what happened with Miller. Right. Like this isn't a, a combination yeah, okay. of Jeff as a person. Yeah, it, it parallels well, Miller. I can, well, I can clearly see that. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and even you know, Colin said, "Well, you know, it's tempting to kind of think this," but he didn't say why that that was wrong. It, it's it's not just that it's tempting; it's it's the obvious uh, way to look at it. So, so when we talk about the close of probation here for the movement. It's it's not it's not talking about individuals. We 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 don't know anything about each individual's walk. We're not saying you know if, if you didn't accept you know what we're doing you're lost. You know that that would be crazy. All we all we can say is that the movement has moved on, right? It's not interested in the light that came from July 18, 2020, and they're going to have. You know, the July 18, 2020 was this era. We need to repent of it. Well, that's definitely parallels October 22nd, 1844 as a way mark. And, and so however God's going to do it, we know that, um, that, that we are doing the right thing by study and that the parallel seems to be 1850 for this movement. Now, at some point, we know that, um, you know, things are going to continue to move. You know, the things are going to happen, but we have no control over those things. All we have is control over what we're doing ourselves personally. So I don't see us, you know, like organizing some kind of church or anything like that. It's just simply we're studying. Now, now there's a lot here, though, that that we can apply to this movement. But because it's future historically. We're still looking at stuff that's happening sort of now, but also is future as well. So I, I don't know when, you know, if we're going to say at that time, shall Michael stand up? We, we can say that there's this specific date that, you know, probation closes for this movement. Other than that, we've had these things that point us to the present time. And so that's where I would say that we're at. We're at the present time. Um, Looking at this. Now, one thing I, I think that I wanted to look at, um, what in, in Jeff, what did he publish on November 15th? I just want to see what his article was then. I was going to look at this. Was that his first article? No, it's not his first article, but I just wonder if that's because it's around that time where he's going to openly for the first time condemn, you know, he's got so many articles though, like to look through them, all the dates where he's going to talk about July 18th. It's going to be around then, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of articles to go through. Um, let's see. Well, they're rejected according to his experience at the end of that. Yeah, so, yeah. He puts out more articles than we put out videos. Okay, so this is going to be... Okay, I see. Going the wrong direction. I know our time is up, but I just want to see if I can find this. So the topic on November 15th was uh, Revelation of Jesus Christ, number 16. So that wouldn't be the first one where he mentions July 18. I don't even know if he mentions July 18 here. 
Yeah, he does mention it. He says there's no direct representation of the 1260 days in the Millerite history. Yet the Millerite history is the history of the first movement and therefore typifies the last movement. The history of the first disappointment in the last movement began on July 18, 2020, and is illustrated in Revelation chapter 11. In Revelation chapter 11, the two witnesses are slain, marking the first disappointment in the last movement that was typified by the first movement, which makes no sense. But that's what he says. So anyway, that's what he says on July, on November 15th, 2023. Okay, well, let's close with prayer. <clears throat> the dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study today. And we ask that you can bring us together tomorrow to look at these things and to try to tie up some of these loose ends for this week. And um, I pray that you can be with each person, that you can watch over them. We ask for your angels' care and protection around us and our families and our friends and those that we come in contact. Help us to represent you in all that we do. And we pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.